Okay, welcome to another iPad painting tutorial. On today's tutorial, I'm gonna paint another winter scene. Really enjoyed doing the simple tree with snow in it from last week. So we're gonna extend that a little bit further. We're gonna add it to a night scene with some really nice warm colors on the horizon and a different kind of color palette. So if you want to follow along exactly as I'm showing you, I'm using the app Procreate on the iPad Pro. Although you can use it on any iPad, it's compatible with pretty much every iPad there is. I've opened an A4 canvas and I've got some colors already open. Go to the color disk here. If you want to copy down the hexadecimal codes and put them in one at a time, then you can type them in here, press enter. The color appears here and you can tap them in and piece it together. Or there is a link that takes you to my Patreon page and you can download the color file there for free. In terms of the brushes, I'm gonna be using within the artistic, the hearts brush, and I'm also gonna be using the airbrushing, the soft brush, and the medium brush. So there are all the settings that I'm gonna be using. If you follow along and you're really happy with your results, or you want to share them with me, then make sure to look down in the video description. It takes you to my Instagram page where you can tag me, or there is a Facebook group there linked to, and there's loads of other artists that share their work and give feedback, and it's just a great community. So without further ado, let's get started. So we're on layer one. I'm just going to grab the first color, which you'll see is this color up here. It's quite dark. If you go to the color disc, you'll see it's a really dark, almost black blue. So we're going to drag that into the canvas and just fill. Next, we're going to create another layer, go back to our colors. We're going to select the second color along, go to our brushes. We're going to use the soft brush and we're going to have it at about 15% size and 100% opacity. And I'm going to start in the middle of our canvas and I'm just going to increase it up until we've just got a small amount of this dark color left at the very top. Then I'm going to go to my adjustments, my Gaussian blur, I'm going to blur it to about the 80%. Deselect. I'm going to create another layer. Go back to our colors. We're going to select this third color along. We're not going to change the settings. It's going to be 15% size and 100% opacity. And this time we're just going to go for about a third of the way up. And then maybe just another, a little bit more on, in addition to that. Then again, we're going to go to the adjustments, the Gaussian blur, and extend that across to about the 70%. Create another layer, go to our colors. We'll select this really nice warm color now. And I'm just going to reduce the size of the brush a little bit to about 10%. Keep it on 100% opacity. And again, just a little bit under where the third way up is. We're just going to create this color. Go to our adjustments, Gaussian blur. Blur it in to about the 50%. We're going to create yet another layer. Move along our colors to this even warmer color. Keep it on the 10% size and the 100% opacity. And we're just eking this a little bit lower. Then we can go to the Gaussian blur. Blur it across until we're about the 30%, I think. It looks nice. In fact, a little less than that because it's encroaching too much further up. So we'll keep it at about the 25%. So again, we're going to create another layer. Go to our last color along on this top row. We're not changing the brush settings, so it's 10% size and 100% opacity. And we're just gonna fill in this bottom section. And then again, Gaussian blur, blur it across to about the 30%. Okay, looking at that now, and this often happens is that once you've done that, you look at it and you think, well, there's maybe an element that could be pushed a little bit further. Now in context with everything else, I'm gonna go back to my layer two. So if you just see that was that really nice dark blue, it wasn't quite the black blue that we started with, but it was a very dark blue. I'm just going to slide it and duplicate it. And it's just doubled the impact of that. So I'll show you what one version looks like again. And this is the double. And I think it just softens it a little bit better at the top. So I'm going to pinch those together to merge them. So now we, we do in fact have one layer still, and it's a really nice impact. So we're going to go to the top layer and create another layer. We're going to go to our colors, select this first color on the middle row. We're going to make sure we're on the medium brush this time. We're going to turn it down to 1% size and 90% opacity. And I've got palm rejection on, so I can zoom in a little bit and I can just, with my hand placed on the screen, start to fill in some stars. Just vary up the pencil pressure. 
keep it quite random. You don't want them too evenly spaced apart. If it looks too contrived, like they're all equal distance apart, it's not going to look very natural. Sometimes there might be a small cluster of quite a few all together. And other times there might be quite a big space where there aren't any. You might even get almost like some in a row. Now, if you're really familiar with the kind of star constellations, then you know maybe you can pull that knowledge into this particular scene, but I don't know. So I'm just making them quite random. And we can alternate our colors. We've got a brighter blue here as well. We're all within the blue spectrum. I think it just suits this piece better. Reserve all the warm color ready for this section. Sometimes I might want to alternate the, the tone of the, the stars and have one or two being quite warm, but for this one, I'm just gonna keep all the warmth in this section. And I'm only going for this top corner, because if you've seen any of my other recent tutorials, I've done quite a few star scenes with starry skies, so I'm just going to quickly repeat this for you now. It's really quite straightforward, saves you a lot of time. I mean, you can just do this manually all the way across, but this is a more efficient way of doing it. So imagine there's a, a line and kind of do the stars approaching that line, but not beyond. Then, we can go to that layer, duplicate it, go to the transform, maybe try flipping it horizontally and perhaps vertically as well, and then we can move it along. So we want to avoid any patterns, then perhaps we can pinch those two layers together just to save time, duplicate it, go to the transform tool, flip it vertically, and then move it along. Then we can pinch those two layers together again, duplicate it, maybe move that down into this lower section. We're gonna have them starting to disappear here anyway. So I've got really not much more I need to add to this scene, so that will do, but maybe we'll flip it horizontally like so. So that will do for the sense of stars. You can add more if you want, but I think that's probably enough. So I'm gonna to go to my layers and merge them together, but I feel like they're encroaching a little bit too much in this lower section, so it's quite easily fixed. We'll just go to our eraser, Make sure it's on the soft brush. We'll put it up to about the 10% size, but put it lower opacity, because we don't want to immediately completely erase them. We want to soften them in. So about 30% on the opacity. And I'm just gonna start reducing them. Once they get down to this lighter area, they're going to be far less visible, like that. And if you want to go back in with the brightest of the blues, because the bright colors will show through more than anything. Maybe if you just one or two, that you really wanted to perhaps exaggerate. You could just go over the, the odd one and they will shine through, but it's all the slightly subtler stars that aren't quite as bright. They're gonna be lost in the mix there. Anyway, so that will be our start, but we are gonna create another layer and we're gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna start using the bottom row of colors. I'm gonna use this color first. And if I just show you on the screen, you can see it's a little bit darker than the, all the other colors we've used, but it's not gonna be a complete silhouette. It's somewhere between. We're going to go to our artistic brushes and we're going to use the hearts brush. I'm going to turn the opacity down to 1%, or rather the size down to 1% and the opacity down to 60%, like that. And what I'm going to start doing is adding features that come into the, this kind of area that encroach on this part. So they're not going to go into this section particularly. Anything that's really closer to us is going to get taller, but as it goes further away, it doesn't extend beyond this kind of band. But what I'm going to do is a few features and I'm going to blur this in slightly anyway so I don't really feel like I need to get bogged down in too much detail but I'm just imagining that they are the top of some trees. So we just start off with a center spike like this and then just some other bits that stick up. Leave deliberate gaps I and mean, it is quite scribbly really it's not you're not going to labor too much time on this. Maybe you can have the odd thing sticking up. It doesn't need to be overly complex or detailed. And we're gonna do this all the way across. So just keep it slightly haphazard. Don't be too refined and spend too much time on this bit. It is gonna be slightly more knockback. And then we're gonna do some slightly nearer to features with the dark colors.
You could even get to the point where maybe you could duplicate it and then you could take a section, move it across, maybe flip it horizontally just to avoid too much obvious repetition. Maybe change the scale up a little bit. Just be mindful when you're doing this that you might create some sections that look obviously symmetrical. So you're just gonna then gonna have to continue working into it a little bit to try and overcome that perhaps in some areas. So don't overly rely upon that, but it's a good way of just speeding up the process perhaps. So use the tools sensibly and actually they really do help create shortcuts and speed up the process. But yeah, too much reliance upon them can actually not be good for the overall effect. So we're gonna then go to our adjustments, Gaussian blur, and I'm gonna blur it in slightly. I don't want them super detailed. In fact, I just noticed a mistake. I need to merge those two layers first. We don't want them separately blurred. Pinch them together, now one layer. Go back to the adjustments, the Gaussian blur, and just blur it in a bit to about the 3%. It's quite powerful, that effect of the blur. If you zoom in, you really see it has softened it and it didn't need to be overly detailed, which is great. So now we've done this much, I feel like I actually want to increase the impact of this lower color. I've done these trees a little bit higher up than I initially imagined I would do. So that means I'm gonna to have to adjust this section. It's the beauty of working digitally is that we can go in and we can adjust things. So go back to layer six. I'm gonna to go to my transform tool, go to the freeform setting on it and just pinch it from these edges and just have it encroaching a little bit further up perhaps. Now we don't want to take away from this orange color. Perhaps we'll just move it up a little bit more instead. So rather than having it spreading out too significantly, we're just gonna move the band up a little bit. It does mean that we've got a gap here. It doesn't matter because we're gonna add darker colors to that section anyway. Go back to the top layer, add another layer this time. And on that basis, I'm gonna to go to my darkest color, which is the third color in. I'm gonna to go to my medium brush, put it at around 8% size and 70% opacity. And I'm just gonna start piecing in the foreground features here. So I want it slightly more raised in the center and then just obscure some of this at the side. I'll get into more detail here. I'm gonna keep some of that color there just for now, but I'm definitely gonna have a big tree in this section so I can start to blot in some of that. Maybe a, another mound here as well, perhaps here. Something like this, just initially. I'm gonna go back to my brushes and the artistic brush, the hearts. I think I will create a new layer for this. Let's test the size. That's gonna to be too small now. So we need to just bump it up slightly to the 2%, not significantly bigger, but it's enough. And we'll turn the opacity up to 80%. So this is gonna form the color for our silhouette trees. So these are gonna be the main feature in the center of our piece. So we do need to spend a little bit more time, certainly in the top sections, just getting the, the kind of detail of the top few branches. So I'm gonna start off with a, the trunk of the tree try and be a little bit careful. It doesn't have to be absolutely dead straight, but it needs to be not too wobbly. And then I can just thicken it up a little bit more at the bottom, although you're not going to see it. It's just useful, just to have a sense of the, the overall proportions and the, the type of tree. And once you're happy with that center part, then we can start to add some small branches at the top, just sort of clustering here at the very top. It's quite sparse. And then we can add some slightly bigger branches. They're gonna to start to quickly grow in scale and they're all clustering together. So this is a little bit neater, perhaps and more considered than the last tree tutorial that I showed you how to do the effect. Just a little bit more considered. You don't have to be too painstaking, but yeah, just a little bit more time and energy put into the details. So I'm just going from left to right still. I mean, previously it was really kind of scribbly and then left to right and then rocking motion. I am moving left to right, just to try and keep the balance, but it's not quite as untidy as the last one was. So as we get further down, certainly we can be a bit more sketchy, just to block in some areas. Maybe snow is clustered on the branches as well and creating this untidy looking silhouette, but we are gonna to have to have a definite sense of individual branches too. And then leave a gap, do another one. Block in some areas. Again, the snow isn't really going to let any light through. Now, we will step, add some highlights so the snow is reflecting snow back, but it's quite dense once it clubs together on the actual needles. 
and the branches is quite dense so you won't see light through it. These gaps are important, so don't overly clutter it up, especially near the top. I think more than anywhere, the top needs to have space coming through. And once we get down to maybe like here, then there's really not going to be very much space at all. So we can start to really clump it together. In fact, we could even turn the size of the brush up, just start to shut down some areas like this. Just build in the mass, maybe turn it down a little bit so we're down to 3% size. And we can really start to get in the overall mass of the object and the shape. Leave the occasional gap, perhaps, but nowhere near as much. And now we're going to get more gaps as we get sort of nearer the edges. That's helped speed up, but we'll turn it back down to the 2% size. Now we can just go in on those edges, make sure it's the lower end of 2% because it does vary quite a bit even within 2%. So put it back at the lower end of 2% and we can just start to, on those very edges, be a bit more specific and give the impression that the whole thing has been really carefully considered, even though it hasn't. Okay, so it's kind of a, you know, a considered process, but it's, it's still relatively quick. So we're going to add a couple more trees to this, so maybe one that's immediately next to it. In fact, let's swap sides. Let's go for one that's about here. And repeat something of the same process, perhaps a little less considered because it's just slightly further back. This is the prominent one, really. Perhaps it's not as bulky. Perhaps it's just a skinny relative. Then maybe just the suggestion of one or two more. Perhaps I'm going to turn the opacity down just a little bit to more like 70%, just to soften it and begin to just create a difference between the absolute dark colors here and slightly lighter versions over in this section. By the time you've gone over it a few times, you're going to get it back to the same opacity. But the chances are when you're going over it just once or twice in the kind of the needle section of the foliage that you are going to end up with a slightly lighter version. Just subtle differences. And then more features here too. Not everything needs to be full on trees, it can just be things that are sticking up from the ground too. Perhaps another tree here in fact. I think it will help the balance of it. So I'm speeding up a little bit. I feel that because we spent the time on that one really being a bit more careful, then it allows us a little bit more freedom to be a little less considered in other areas, a bit more sketchy. And then as it gets further down, like we say, we're shutting down a lot of the light in this area so we can really clump it together, create some texture on the ground perhaps. And then maybe just a little hint of something here as well. Not a big tree, but another one. And then I'm going to go in with another layer. So I'm just going to go back a layer to layer nine and then create another layer. So it's now sandwiched between those two. And I'm going to go back a layer or a color to this brown color. And I'm just going to use that a little bit to add in some slightly more distant features that have just got a hint more of that warmth, but I'm not going to overdo this. I'm just going to add a, a suggestion that there's another layer of tone within that silhouette. So I'm just sort of scribbling a little bit in this lower section just to soften that absolute harsh black silhouette into the, the lighter color in the background, just to break it up a little bit, just to give a slight sense of layers. Okay, we then we're going to go back to our top layer, create another layer, go back to our colors, and we've got just some colors at the end now that we're going to start adding snow effects. So we're going to go for this first color. It's kind of, I'll just show you one here, a really quite muted color. And I think this will be good for creating some slight disturbances in the, the ground where the snow is. But we need to go back to our airbrushing and I think the soft brush. Put it down to about 3% size and quite low on the opacity, it's around 20%. So I'm just going to create some suggestion now, some sweeps. Because there's ambient light, we're going to have a hint that there's light coming in from all around being reflected and bringing in its impact. 
and we like this, just quite subtle. And we'll create another layer, and we're going to go to the end color, and we're gonna to go to the second in from the right, and I'm just gonna start placing in with a soft brush at 2% size and 40% opacity. I'm just gonna start placing in really not too much, but just a few blotches here, just to bring out the form of the tree now, because we have a, a silhouette, but now's the time to start bringing out that shape. Keeping some gaps, the gaps are just as important. In some areas you're gonna get really nice big clumps too, especially near the centre bits, they're gonna be more noticeable. I'm gonna to go to my end colour now, which is the brightest version. Maybe turn the opacity up even further now to 50%, and just start to bring out some real highlights. Now let's, let's even go for it, let's go for 60%, let's go wild. Maybe think about the top of some of these branch sections as well. You're going to get the snow resting, obviously, on the top of these branches. So maybe aim some of this colour for those sections specifically. So you certainly want to, you know, have a little bit of a sense of random placement, but you also need to think where is the snow likely to settle most. And it probably is, to be fair, on top of the branches, isn't it? Go back to the duller version of it and we can just work a little bit more in those distant ones maybe turn the opacity back down again to 40 percent and i'm just going to introduce a hint more for the background but i'm really not adding much for that because they're slightly more distant the highlights are going to be a little less noticeable and then i'm just going to continue sweeping it in on the floor here as well maybe turn the size up to four percent we can just create some sweeps of snow Back to the brightest, back to this bright colour, back up to 60%, just create a few more highlights perhaps. We don't want to overdo it, but just tweak it in places. I'm just going to take this end colour and I'm, I'm going to just I'm going to put it over here, so if you've been referring to these colours, you'll have noticed this strange colour at the end. So <laughs> it's there because I've just added it now and I didn't add it prior to the beginning of the tutorial. So I'm just going to, with a small brush at 2% size and 30% opacity, just add in some even brighter highlights here and there. So I want to be a little bit sparing with it. Perhaps we could go a bit more bright, so we can go to 50%. And let's just ramp up some of the highlights. I think it will bring out this tree a little bit better. So I'm going to use some dots and some textures for this. And I think that helps just a little bit more. And then we're just going to increase the size of the brush to about 8% size and the opacity down to about 20%. Maybe I can just soften in some of this foreground, lighten up a little bit like that. Okay, I'm gonna leave that particular tutorial here at that point. I hope you've enjoyed following along. Make sure to tag me, follow me, join my Facebook group, and most importantly, if you could press the thumbs up on this video, it really helps out the video and the channel. Hope to catch you back here soon, see you later.